What's it like moving to the USA? I would love to move to America. So this is going to be a really interesting video to see exactly what it's like from a British perspective. I think he's been living there for like over 10 years now. So this is going to be super interesting to have a look at. Before we do, like 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. If you've wanted the 80%, I really appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button. Let's jump straight into this to see what we got. Connect Lawrence from Lost in the Pond on the channel. Lawrence, lost in the pond, brilliant in Chicago. Get Lawrence on or I'm going to kick you in the face. Okay, uh, I think I should maybe get Lawrence from Lost in the Pond on my channel. Yeah, you better listen to him. Oh, wow. wow. I'm so good at things <laughs> and magic. magic. Wait, can I do that? Hi, Lawrence. Who's that? We're in my hotel. It's Diane. His wife is here too. It's okay. You're hit. So today I have Lawrence from Lost in the Pond with me. You look lost in this setup. So My general name? disposition, Diane. How did you get here through the magic of cinema? Taxi. We took a taxi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lawrence from Lost in the Pond. You just said that, but yeah. I'm saying it again. Hello. Yo, why is he talking like he's kidnapped right now, bro? <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. Because that's who I am, it's what I do. Check me out on YouTube. Good videos. the other social media places. And he does culture stuff and things too. Yeah. Both of their links will be in description. Very light-hearted way. Awkward. Well today I'm going to talk to Lawrence about what's like being a person living in the United States of the America yes. versus being a person just visiting the United States of the America. They're both very different things. They are different things Bro. because I feel like I get all the loveliness of like being a tourist and I get to see all the nice things. And Yo, this is going to be so good actually, right? Because I always watch videos about like tourists checking out America and they say in their opinions and stuff. But now we're going to have like a tourist, you know, perspective and someone who's been living here for 10 plus years from Britain as well. So yeah, this is gonna be good. Maybe I get people on their best behavior. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It's possible, especially with your accent. Uh, and I've uh, experienced that myself in the past visiting. Right. And I think that's true. I think some of the day-to-day -day things that I have to experience living here, you don't have to put up with. So it's great. Okay, yeah, definitely. Like what? Uh, something, and uh, we're just gonna get this one out of the way, tipping. Mm. How many times have you talked about tipping? Tipping! <laughs> tipping a lot because it's such a big cultural difference, I think, between both America and my country and probably your country, I suspect. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So when I come here, I really do have to think about it, though. Like, yeah. when I'm tipping, like, am I tipping this much? Am I tipping this much? Do I tip this person? Have they gone? But I guess living here, you must be on autopilot by now. Yes, it, you do get into that kind of autopilot. Yeah, that's one of those things that, like, after some time, you'll just fully adapt to that. Because I'm thinking when I do go to America, I am going to be worrying about the tipping because I don't want to come across like rude and stuff. I definitely want to tip when um, it's required, well, whenever you're meant to tip, right? So I'm constantly going to be thinking, do I tip now? How much do I tip? Do I tip? And living there after so many years, you just be like, boom, boom, boom. There you go. I looked way with it. However, there are certain circumstances where I still don't know if I'm supposed to tip. Like oh, if you really? go into, um, not a subway, because I don't think it's expected there, but in a fancy kind of like place where they make things for you at a counter and then you yourself take it to a desk. Okay. I'm still unsure if you tip for that. Some people say you don't, some people say you do. So I don't know, but the tipping thing is still an unusual thing for me because it's not required. Right. Yo, I even after that many years of living there, he's still unsure. Wait, so people, like, I have so many Americans watching this video, right? So many of you guys. Let me know down below in the comment section. Is sometimes, surely not. Sometimes are you guys unsure about tipping? Like, <laughs> even living there? I don't know, maybe when you're born there from birth. I know, surely you just know, right? I, yeah, I, I thought he would know by now, though. I had a funny one, actually. Uh, I got a spray tan. Oh, so oh, I know, fancy. I'm off white. Wow. <laughs> right, because if you're not Oompa Loompa Orange, what are you even doing with your life? But I asked for medium, mm. and I got fair. If fake tan dysmorphia is affecting you or a loved one, please contact Diane for our <laughs> channel membership. Also, if you're enjoying this video, you'll probably enjoy the behind the scenes and the additional video, which will be coming out in this channel soon. So oh, cool. subscribe or miss it. So I'm supposed to go back and get re-sprayed. Now I already tipped for it and they offered my money back, but they said they'd re-spray me. So I'm like, do okay. I tip again? 
That, that's a good question. And without much experience of tanning salons, I can't really give you an in-depth answer to that. But I can say that I think that just generally speaking, when you revisit or go back to an establishment that maybe you've been to before, it's still expected that you would perhaps tip. If it's a different oh, person, really? I'm okay. thinking, I'll tip them. But yeah. if it's the girl who did me the first time... You've got to send a message. Right. <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. I'm actually She's a... been in Chicago. Yo, to be fair though, like the first time they did a job, right? You tipped. The second time they're doing another job, no? So like I I don't know, it's a little bit confusing though. I'm gonna have to have American with me all times when I go to America just to help with the tipping situation. Go too long. <laughs> I, I am a profoundly good tipper. Right. Yeah. Or just tip everyone. <laughs> Just walk around, here's a tip, here's a tip, here's a just tip everyone, bro, screw it. Yeah, 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 definitely. 20% 20 every time, not every time, there was this one incident at IHOP where we got shortchanged in both senses of the word, and that person received a tip of about 1%. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine you would do that. I wouldn't do that, but I was, I was tempted. It was in my head to do it. And, and the uh, British... Anger is so quiet and seething. It is, but also this sort of like propensity to be polite was also weighing right. against it. So I thought... No, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Listen, yo, if I go to, well, when I go to America, right? Let's say I get really bad service, right? You still tip? I ain't tipping. But if I get, I know America's service is really good. So you probably won't be in that situation, but like in the UK, you get bad service, bro. So I'm just saying, if I get really bad service, ain't no way I'm tipping, bro. There ain't no way I'm tipping. Like if it's like, let's say they're rude, they're trying to get you out. You know what I'm saying? Nah. In fact, let me know any situations you guys have been in where you just not tip because of the bad service. But then it's America, they rely on tips, so... I've heard it's always good service, but I don't know. I could be wrong. So, well, I, I should at least do something, and I did. Right. I love, like, how expressive Americans are. Like, when an American is angry, you know they're angry. Oh, yeah. And um, I found myself, like, say something happens, even on camera, and I'm like, was I was I very furious there? And it was very rude. And then I look back at it, you know, and it's same with British people. Oh, yeah. You're like, no, you're angry at all. Oh, you yeah, actually but... seem quite Oh, positive. you definitely you can get angry yeah, Brits. I'm fine. You, and you feel it deep within your, you know. <laughs> Boiling. Being. Exactly. that you've been rude and you it's like when we uh met you today uh tara suggested oh why don't you come meet us at where we're gonna be and i was like oh, i've already made the plans we don't want to ruin the plans now you know <laughs> and so that happened and i still feel bad to this day no you shouldn't i'm totally fine with it they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't i love it editing because they would never understand if they're just like straight out the gate very broad general question mm. Is there any huge differences you can think about being a person who visits here versus being a person who lives here that would immediately... Jump? Right. I think some of it's to do with your with the day-to-day -day stuff. I mean, um, for instance, you're mandated to have uh, and purchase healthcare here or get it as part of your job. Okay. The healthcare system, of course, wildly different to what I would expect back home. We had an incident years ago where um, we got a massive bill. We're talking six figures here. Are we, I can't... A hundred grand plus! Do maths. Six. Six figures. I know. For what? I know. And uh, and so but eventually it was all sorted and everything is fine. But it is a big shock. And then what? ambulance rides can be anywhere up to six thousand dollars. You know, that's an expensive taxi to the hospital. <laughs> so, Yo, bro, I, I don't care. If I lose my left leg, my right leg, my arm, bro, listen. I'm going to get a taxi, man. I ain't got six grand like that to be spending on an ambulance. It, it, ambulance come? I'm like, no, no, no. I'll pass. Taxi. Taxi me, bro. So things like that really stick out to me. It's those things that you need in your life, but you wouldn't necessarily have if you're a traveler here. Right. right. And uh, yeah, healthcare is a big one. Uh, but if we're not going to stick to just the negative, uh, <laughs> although they do generate clicks, I would say that a lot of the food that I've experienced here has been mind-blowing uh, to the extent oh. that I didn't even know that such a, oh. uh, um, a, a diversity of foods was uh, in the offing when I moved here. Food? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Now, I do guess... This is the same reaction every time and it just teases me to the max, bro. Your food looks really good, right? And even sometimes after I watch the video, I sit back and I'm, I'm like... But is it actually that much better? But then, like, I see people's reactions from the UK. 
and they're like, wow, oh my God. They're, they're very like, they're, they're just blown away. So it has to be that much, but it, I can't wait. I really, really, re I love food, bro. I really, really, really can't wait to try it. Really can't wait. The worst of the food, because I do the yeah. taste tests. And I mean, pretty much what I come here, it's just like junk food, junk food, junk food, junk right. food. Right. Oh, that's beautiful. But when you live here, is it a different experience? I'm not sure it is so much different. We still have fast food to this day, you know, because there's the convenience of it that you perhaps don't even have in the UK, where you can just drive up to the building and say, I'd like a Big Mac. <laughs> you know, uh, not for free. You have to pay still. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, to be fair, if I go to America, I'm going to be five times the size because it's already bad as it is. We just moved into this place last week and we get McDonald's delivery. In my last place, I did it, right? I know it's bad. I know it's bad. I know it's unhealthy. You shouldn't. But I think in the past seven days, I've had probably 10, 12 McDonald's. I've ordered one, two a day. I, I know, bro, it's bad. It's bad. We haven't done a food shop yet, so we, we don't really have much food in the house. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. So imagine me in America. <laughs> oh, God, oh, no. I think so expensive here. In Chicago, Wait, what is it? it's not too bad. You say it's me. expensive? Just, everything's so Mac. <laughs> you know, uh, not for free. You have to pay still. Oh, my gosh. Uh, everything's so expensive here. Really? In Chicago... It's not too it. bad for a major city, but it's when you get out west, as you've seen, where things are yeah, crazy in terms of expense. But in terms of oh, all wow. that, it doesn't change much, but I've noticed that the depending on where you are geographically in the United States, your options might be different. Like, right. for example, out in Boston, you've got various types of seafood that uh, you can get here, but it's not the real deal that you'd get in Boston. Right. Um, and same with all of those other local dishes that I've talked about on my channel too. And uh, that's the great thing about the fact that America is so large. It has just such a broad collection of food items that uh, i can't get for the most part in britain yeah you just get a massive variety of things in the uk you literally if you it, like fast food you're stuck with a few and that's it it's not really crazy variety right is there anything when you go back to britain is there anything you're like oh i really wish we had that here it, this is really sad to say but an arby's roast beef sandwich <gasps> i have one the i've heard that. so much about arby's it looks like a tongue. What's <laughs> break? I was expecting a patty. How did you feel about it? Yeah, that? also big blobs of meat. If you, if you can call it meat, I don't know. But there's something just so unbelievably nice about them that reminds me of my first day living here because we drove to an Arby's after leaving Indianapolis Airport and I thought Ooh. I'd reached the promised land. I've heard so much about Arby's. So the next thing I want to ask you about is integration. Mm. I mean, obviously you have your beautiful accent and I'm sure people okay. ask you about that all the time. Yes. But how easy or difficult has it been for you to integrate into American culture? It's, it's a good question because I think you're right. The accent does to some degree help, especially when I lived in a kind of smaller town in Indiana where they just don't meet many English people. Right. My accent stood out to them. They would ask me all manner of questions about my family, the royal family, as you might ah. have heard of. And I didn't usually have... Uh, you know you were royalty. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's one of those things that the papers generally overlook because I don't dress very well. Yo, he's a part of the royal family? Yeah, crazy. But... To the contrary. Yeah, right. Well, I don't dress like them. That actually helped, the, the fact that they, they cottoned on to my accent. Okay. It made it easier to make friends with people. Sure. To make connections. To get jobs. I really? I really? got jobs on the back of my accent. Yeah, oh, pretty cool. It was huh? cool, but on the first day, they did single me out for attention among the group of new hires and, and had me speak my accent to them. Oh, wow. That's not a lie. Not Say baked beans. beans. <laughs> yes, please do. It was that they wanted to put me up, up in against the wall and just speak. Sounds with. like something you should talk to somebody <laughs> about, maybe. That's it's a bit funny. late now. I, I, uh, yeah, Yo, everyone from the UK should move, bro. You can get, you can get jobs out there, man. Anyone that don't have a job in the UK, just try and get to America. You might get a job with your accent. I left that job about 12 years ago. Right, you're oh. okay now. Are I, you? I, I, you're I, severely traumatized. I'm still in therapy for it. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Here's an obvious but necessary question. Yes. Do you have any advice for a prospective person oh, okay. thinking about moving to the USA? Okay, could Keep be me. Your accent. Uh, it'll help in the USA. Keep your accent. 
uh, it'll help in those early days. But that's just, that's very superficial. And, and this You know what? You know, if I were to move to America, right? I'm not just saying this. I actually would like my accent to change. Because I don't like how, like, how sharp the UK accent is. Do, does that make sense? How, like, we cut off a word straight away. Where in America, you kind of, like, drag it out a little bit. It just sounds more, like, smoothing. I know. I prefer it. This doesn't just apply to moving to America. I think that when you move to any new country, it's very much worth your time to embrace that new country. I think a yes. lot of people come here and they decry the things they can't get anymore, like their favorite chocolates from back right. home or um, just their favorite TV shows or whatever it might be. And I do that too, but it's not a, it's not to the detriment of my quality of life here. I, I still try to enjoy living here. If I didn't, I wouldn't be talking about it in such positive terms on my channel. I think that's it. I think it's embrace it. Uh, every country in the world comes with both both its negative and positive oh, yeah. elements, and you have to just uh, go along with it. I think for right, I do agree with you. Like you really do have to integrate yourself into the culture which brings Embrace me to the next it. question hmm. cultural integration versus cultural preservation these are huge words They're yo okay right listen listen we got to the point where i i, I don't know what we're doing now what does that mean <laughs> what does that mean cultural integration versus cultural preservation these are huge huh? words they are big words right too big I for like me reading books too big for I me i do too and what does that mean? Please ask me. Do you find it difficult to maintain your British culture without becoming too American while also being able to like get along in daily life? I right. think I okay. cheated the system here a little bit because, mm -hmm. well, because I've become a YouTuber who talks about these things. I feel it almost incumbent upon myself to maintain a certain Englishness, I think. It's accidental, sure. it's not something that I'm doing on purpose necessarily, but I know that my audience is tuning in partly because I am British. Yeah, so it sure. just continues to happen and I preserve it that way. And also I talk about my Britishness on my channel. So there's a, a certain connection to it. But in some instances, I have just let go of some of the things I grew up with in Britain simply because you don't access them here. Like what? Well, television is a big one, actually. Right. Um, although I have various means to rectify that. The war. Yeah, listen, I've heard in a couple of videos, like, people actually enjoy British television. That blows my mind. Like, yeah, we have a couple good shows, Doctor Who being one of them, right? But other than that, all, all my favorite TV shows are American. All of them. Literally like 95%, bro. Talkability of Britain is something I miss, or at least the, um, I suppose the way things, for instance, the way the streets are laid out. Like, I love that they're all winding over there. Oh, but really? I also forgot that they were winding over there because I've just gotten used Block. to blocks and rectangles and things like that. And I've accepted those for what they are. I actually right. really value block and grid yeah. layout. Directions are so easy to follow here. Yeah. I and also, we are unicorns because neither of us drive. Wait, we're unicorns. Easy to follow here. Yeah. And also, we are unicorns because neither of us drive. Wait, we're unicorns. Unicorn. I didn't know this. <laughs> That's all that like. Well, I knew that, but this is a revelation. Like, where's the the thing sticking out of my head? Oh, it's in the horn. Magic. I like that. Uh -huh. Something that I find interesting when I'm on my way to make a trip over here is yeah. right. having to concern myself more so with safety and security, yeah. which is obviously when you live somewhere, you don't really think about. Yeah. How have you found that living here versus traveling here? It's uh, it's an interesting one, that, because I think that the news might suggest that America could be an unsafe place to live, given right. all of the sort of wacky stories that come. Yeah, you ask any typical Brit, yo, what do you think about safety in America? They'll be like, yo, I'm gonna get shot. That's what, that's what they'll say. They'll, they'll just mention about guns, right? So, yeah, yeah, let's see what he's going to say about it. I'm very interested. That America could be an unsafe place to live, given all of the sort of wacky stories that come out. I right. think that depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, where okay. even in Chicago, there are perfectly walkable and safe places in all throughout Chicago, in fact, but it gets this reputation as a war zone. These are things I've just war never zone. seen with my own experience. Um, so it's well, yeah, it's just bad places in certain, you know what I mean? So like even the UK have bad places in cities, right? 
there's places you want to avoid in each city. That's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. It's about knowing where to where to walk, where to right. be, and all of that. I generally think I felt more unsafe in certain parts of Britain. Wow. That's very interesting. Yeah, but then wow. again, I say that as a a bloke who's six feet tall. So I, I, you know, I don't have all the answers to that question. Certainly that's been my wow. experience, but uh, I don't know how you found it this week. It's, it's very interesting because I suppose in a way when you're living somewhere, it's the devil you know. Yes. So you sort of know what like scams to be aware of. Yeah, oh, yeah. True, or like true, what true. streets are dodgy and what true. like, you know, what you're kind of grand to walk around with your phone out. Yeah. Whereas when you're somewhere totally new and you're visiting, you're just like, oh, I've got to be careful everywhere. Yeah. I don't know if this is a safe place or not. That was me in San Francisco, actually. Okay. Yeah, uh, specifically when I went there six years ago. I initially was there on my own at night, and uh, by all accounts, where I was was not unsafe, but I just didn't know, you know, yeah. so I just assumed, and I was looking over my shoulder, you know, all the time, and I'm like, oh, what's he doing? Oh, he's <laughs> just selling baguettes, it's fine, <laughs> but you don't know that, you're right, right. When you, when you, but, 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 but certainly when you live here on the day-to-day, -day, you hear all the stories, oh, don't go down that street, or don't, you know, walk into that person's yard, I mean, that's just Yo, point. and you know what? You guys don't help. Should I tell you why? And you know who you are. You guys will come into my stream all the time. We have amazing chats over there. If you want to head over there, twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. We get to talk live, right? But you guys come into my stream and you tell me about these crazy stories. Like, I know there's bad places in all countries, right? And good places, right? And I know the media blows stuff up, you know, for, for news and clicks, right? So, but you guys will come into my stream and tell me, yo, there's a shooting here, shooting there, shooting here, shooting there. I know this many people that's been shot. <laughs> I know this many people who uh, who has died or been murdered. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, whoa, I don't know anyone that's happened like, <laughs> I don't know anyone that's died like that or anything. So you guys do have some crazy stories, I ain't gonna lie. But I don't know if that's just because your population is so big and you just, I don't know, you know more. But I, don't, I don't know. It's interesting. Very, very, very interesting. You got, unless you're trolling me, I don't know. <laughs> but you're not helping when you come into my streams and saying that. Because I'm telling you right now, so many of you do. Generally speaking, yeah. 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 Don't do that. <laughs> Have there been any times that you found your Britishness being lost in translation amongst the American? Okay. Yes, actually. It's plenty plenty of times. America. And often. It doesn't manifest through words and phrases, sometimes it does. Often it's tone. I think sometimes people here don't recognize my brand of sarcasm. And that, by the way, is right. not to say that Americans themselves don't get sarcasm or don't have it. They do. It's just very different. I think I've Americans heard that. are sarcastic. I've heard that Americans struggle to understand British sarcasm. Or, or just like anyone, really. I don't know. Obviously, because I'm British, I don't see that or anything. I wonder if I've ever been sarcastic and you guys haven't realized and whatnot uh, yeah yeah they let you know it's sarcastic from right. their tone of voice right and i think british people are just so sort of dry about it that you can't really tell that they're being sarcastic totally oh, i think that's wow. like that's very true and something i maybe have cut out of my personality on youtube a little bit is the sarcasm i think i do that i actually think i've been like the typical british sarcasm like sarcastic where I've been sarcastic, but I, my tone of voice is the same. So you wouldn't be able to tell. Yo, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I got to do a her and try and cut that out because that could be confusing. Sarcasm? Because I'll, like more often than not, people don't get it. I've ramped it up. Oh, yeah. really? I, yeah, I just feel like it's because <laughs> it's more fun. Yeah. Especially if they don't get it. I you love know? it. You can write in the comments. I did a video recently and I was reacting I love to something from the 60s or 70s, a music video, and I went, wow, look, no phones anywhere. Not a phone in sight. And everyone's like, damn, <laughs> phones weren't invented back then. Mobile phones. And I was like, I know, I was just joking. But it's just like, yeah. as you say, the tone is just different. You know what? I've actually reacted to some stuff where I've been sarcastic and people have commented for, like believing me. But I replied to the comments. I was like, wow, I was just, I was just like, I was kidding. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, it, and it's even harder when you're writing it down, I suppose, in a comment, because they can't even, you can't see the sarcasm. Just... Yeah. 
I heard there's a new thing. You hashtag S when you mean sparkle. Are you serious? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Ah? Oh, no, hashtag slash. Slash S. Slash. I have to I remember that. Slash. Oh, wow. Maybe I'll say that out loud when I'm being yeah. sarcastic as well. Slash Yo, S. we got to make that a thing. Slash S. Be really awkward. <laughs> yeah. Slash S. But my last question for you, Lauren, to Lost in the Pond, yeah. uh, of Lo at Go check his channel. It's wonderful. It um, is good. That sounded words. like slash sarcasm, but it wasn't. No, please. <laughs> I, you can be as sarcastic about that as you want. It's great. You know, it is. I am actually being sincere. <laughs> anyway, if you could come up with an invention for a British person who has moved over or is thinking of moving oh. over to the America, uh -huh. um, what would that be? It can be technological. It can be otherwise. High speed rail would be good, uh, just because, you know, we Getting don't around. really have that in America and we technically have it in Britain and I miss it. But I realize that that's that that is a pipe dream, sometimes literally right. with trains. I see. I know I would fit in so well to America because I, I've heard that like the public transport isn't great in America. I hate public transport. I'd rather just drive. Like every time I watch these videos, I'm just like, yep, 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 yep. I'll just fit in so well. Oh man, I just want to move so bad. <laughs> I, I actually want to move so bad. I think though, for my own personal life, I don't know, maybe it would be something uh, to where I can just translate myself, especially when I'm being ultra sarcastic. Okay. But also the words that I use so that when I encounter an American and I use a word that is just not used here, it translates to them in their brain like they're in an episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Crack. I always have that. That's a huge one. Yeah. Crack. Oh, crack. Cr That's the, good Irish. Crack. the Irish word for crack is fun. For a minute there, yeah. I thought you were offering me something untoward. But you're so American. <laughs> <laughs> crack is like obviously in America not a good thing, but in Ireland a very good thing. It's yeah. spelled differently, correct? C or A I C. Right. Like, it isn't like when you say "that's good crack," you mean like. That's good stuff. That, 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 that's good, yeah. Okay, can you explain to me what that is again? I, I saw it in one of your videos. It's so fun. Just me having fun. Having a bit of crack. A that's bit of right, I've heard English people use that term. Yeah, oh, English people have used it. We've adopted it. We've Ireland stolen always. your stuff. It's okay. It's <laughs> You're used to that by time. now. Yeah, so that's <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is there any app you could think of that would be like... Good. Tell a potato so I could go to America. To America. Yes, actually, I think it would be a great idea if there was an app that pointed people to the correct visas that they need when applying for, say, citizenship oh, or okay. a residence or whatever it might be. That way, they don't have to go through all of the legwork to type it in on USCIS's website. Nah, that's stumbled. what you did. Gotcha. Was it? it in on USCIS's website. I'm not disgruntled. <laughs> gotcha. Sounds like a personal experience you've had. A little that my wife reminded me of off camera. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. I've had a production <laughs> value on this video. The lighting setup and the uh, the couch and everything. We've had a, a wonderful producer on this video. Bravo. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Oh, it's been really lovely. And thank this you so much good. for meeting up with me today. I didn't have a choice. No, not really. But, um... I think they would have all been really mad with me if I didn't if I didn't meet up with you. I, I would have been mad too, so I'm glad you got in touch. They've been wonderful hosting me in their beautiful city, so thank you. You're welcome. That's just made me want to move to America so much more now. Yeah, I really want to go, man. I ain't gonna lie. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.